Hey, what's up everybody? On today's Finally Legal, we drive a really, really cool Mitsubishi and no, it's not an Eclipse Cross. Let's go. What's up everybody and welcome to Finally Legal. In this series, we drive the JDM legends that are, well, finally legal. The team at Top Rank gave us the keys to their shop and told us to take out whatever we want. So I chose a dream car of mine, this 1994 Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 2. For me, the Lancer Evolution 2 is what really set the stage for what the Evo would become. This is the car that gave the Mitsubishi Lancer its first ever win in the WRC. It's also the car in which Tommy Mackinnon started his career with Mitsubishi. Every subsequent Evo went a bit too hot boy for my tastes, so to me, the Evo 2's unassuming look is just about perfect. When you look at this car, it looks like a standard 1990s Japanese Econobox sedan. Unless you know what to look for, there's nothing special about it. But if you do know what to look for, there are some strong cues that this is a high performance machine. That hood is constructed from aluminum, helping cut weight for racing duties. Those vents are subtle, but they are very functional. Down below, that red contrast chin spoiler is actually functional too. The first Lancer Evo had a tendency to understeer at race speeds, so Mitsubishi added this to reduce airflow and therefore lift underneath the car so the front tires would have more bite. And around back, that dual level wing is pure function too. Compared to the Evo 1, it's been designed to add more downforce without adding too much drag, and I think it looks rad, and best of all, it is 100% functional. But there are no crazy fenders, decals, or other things that really shout, hey, this is a race car. It's a sleeper, and that's why it's awesome. Inside, it's straight 90s Japanese econo box. The design is simple, and even the gauge cluster features only attack, speedometer, temperature gauge, and gas gauge. But again, it's those small parts that let you know that this car is something special. Those Recaro seats stand out, especially with that 90s Dixie cup print. And if you peel back the cover on the steering wheel, you'll see it's actually just a regular Momo aftermarket wheel. But hey, at least it's got an intercooler spray button. This is an Evo, so of course it's got the 4G63 under the hood. Here, it's rated at 260 horsepower, and it's mated to a 5-speed transmission. 260 ponies may seem low today, but here, this engine is a gem. There is nothing, and I mean nothing, like a well-sorted 90s Japanese sports car. This car was made in an era before computers started controlling everything. So you get in a car now, you have a computer controlling your throttle, you have a computer controlling your steering, you have a computer controlling your brakes. I mean, yeah, there's mechanical redundancies and all that, but essentially it's all electronically assisted. This is pure mechanical and you feel every bit of it and it just makes for a drive that's incredibly engaging and incredibly communicative. All right, let's talk power. Up front, we've got an Evo staple, the 4G63 turbocharged inline four. Here, being a little bit older, it's rated at 260 horsepower. That's up about 10 horsepower from the Evo one. Obviously, it's very, very, very far away from the gentleman's agreement 280 metric horsepower that later Evos had. With this being a Lancer Evolution, yeah, it's all wheel drive. Um, this is based off the Lancer chassis, so it's a you know front bias system that sends power to the rear as needed. Um, it's purely mechanical, which is awesome for me because you get these new systems. I mean, yeah, they're amazing, but it's a, it's a computer deciding what wheel gets what power, and uh, it's just sort of like playing Gran Turismo on easy mode. Uh, with all the, it's like just full assist, and it's kind of like the car is doing the driving for you. I mean, yeah, you'll turn a faster lap time, but if you're not racing, really, what you want is fun. You want to feel that connection with the machine, and you've got that here. Now, one thing I really like about this Evo is the steering. Um, not that I can really, you know, demonstrate it here on the straight road, but you have a lot of cars where just the steering feels really light or it feels really artificial. I mean, I blame the new electric power assist that's so common in cars today because you know you need to have the computer see if you're turning out of your lane and it tries to put you back. So you have a lot of new cars try to make the car feel engaging but it's really not. This is pure old school mechanics or probably a hydraulic assist. Um, so when you turn it's just immediate you just really feel the car want to go where you want to point it but it's not heavy. It's really really just easy to use and with a 
car that's got this much capability, you know, ease of use just goes, ease of use is everything. But not all is perfect. After all, this car is older than most of you, so you can tell it's lived. Mechanically, it feels fine, but the surface shows some wear and tear. The seat belts are a bit loose, meaning if I crash, I fly through the windshield. The fabric is all wrinkly, and the vent controls are loose. And horribly, and this day is incredibly hot, the AC does not work. So it m***s off, roll the window down. Oh, it's hot. I am roasted. Still, all those things can be fixed, and let's be honest, no one is buying a 26-year-old Evo expecting the comforts of a 2020 Lexus. To me, the Lancer Evo 2 is just about perfect. I can't recall the last time I've driven a car that felt this pure, and I can't remember a time I had this much fun driving a car. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Finally Legal. I feel incredibly lucky to have driven this Evo 2, and I really want to thank Top Rank for making it happen. This is YouTube, so you know the drill. Smash those like and subscribe buttons. But more importantly, comment below and tell us what cars you want us to drive next. And with that, see you all next time.